Welcome to the video step-by-step -step instructions for my cut garden dress pattern and thank you so much for purchasing. I really appreciate everyone's support. So please watch this video all the way through before beginning since I present various journeys to creating this dress. You can really take this and run with it and I am calling the various looks options instead of views. So to begin with all options, we're going to use the bodice ring method. To do this, you will have two bodice fronts cut on the fold as well as two bodice backs cut on the fold. You'll arrange these pieces in an alternating front, back, front, back pattern and then join all four pieces together at the shoulder seams with right sides together. You can iron those shoulder seams open and when you put the fronts together, that'll fold the back bodice pieces onto themselves and now we have a fully lined bodice without any back seams. I simply love this bodice ring method. Next, for all options, we're going to join the bodice side seams. So I'm bringing the outside of the dress and putting those side seams together with the right sides together. And I'm repeating the same thing for the lining portion. But again, I'm treating the outside of the dress and the lining portion separately. So in total, there are four side seams to sew and not just two. This will make sure all the seams are inside the dress and your lining stays neat on the inside too. And for now, I'm going to put the bodice front sections together and set this whole thing aside. Here is one option for the unlined bodice overlay. So if you are doing the unlined version of the bodice overlay, I would highly recommend joining the side seams together using a very small French seam. To do this, put your pieces wrong sides together and join them together. And then trim that seam down, iron the seam around, and then sew on the other side of those raw edges. This will enclose those raw edges and leave you with a French seam. Additionally, join the shoulder seams together using a French seam as well. Continuing with the unlined bodice overlay, here are some edge finishing options. Normally, I like to save all my hand sewing until the garment is complete, but in this case, I decided to go ahead with hand sewing the raw edges using a rolled hem. To do this, I'm using Madeira 80 weight threads since this is lightweight Nola fabric that I'm working with. And I start by tying on. And now to do this, I create a loop and I go through that loop twice and pull tight to secure the thread to my fabric. And notice I'm setting myself up to work from left to right. To create the roll, I first iron my raw edge over about quarter of an inch and then take a very small bite at the bottom in that iron crease. And then a small bite directly above at that folded edge. Again, a small bite in the crease and then another bite at the folded edge. And I continue doing it in this manner. And then when I pull on that thread, it magically rolls the fabric into this nice, neat little package. I just love that, right? Isn't it a cool little trick? Alternatively, you could finish those raw edges with some lace or entredeau combo. Here I am gently gathering some lace edging and putting my lace right sides together with my fabric and kind of angling the raw edge of the lace into that back facing so I can conceal the tail of that lace later on. And then I zigzag the lace onto the fabric which causes the fabric to bundle into a nice li neat little roll as well. And when I get to one of those points, I sew up to the point and then put my needle down and turn my work, adjusting the lace and then continuing to sew around that next curve. And voila, I finished those raw edges with some lace. Isn't that just a precious embellishment? <laughs> In both cases, I'm applying these techniques to the bottom edge of the bodice overlay as well as that top neckline edge. Finally, to finish the back facing portion, you can either fold over the raw edge once about quarter of an inch and sew that down and then fold the entire thing over and hand sew that into place. And that is a sweet old school kind of a vintagey look. Or you can fold that raw edge once about quarter of an inch and notice my bodice overlay is wrong sides up here and I'm folding that raw edge onto it and then ironing that in place. 
and then I flip my bodice overlay so that it's right sides up and I fold the entire back facing portion around. I'm also tucking in my lace tails which is going to conceal those but this back facing portion works when you don't have lace too. I sew about quarter of an inch on the top and bottom and that's another way to finish these back facing portions on an unlined bodice overlay. But maybe you're going the bodice overlay fully lined route. So let's go over that construction. With any of these bodice overlays, interfacing is always an option. So I decided to put some German interfacing onto this bodice overlay on that back facing portion. So I join the outside of my bodice overlay together at the shoulder seams with right sides together. And I repeat the same thing for my lining bodice overlay. Then I put the lining right side together with the bodice overlay. I'm making sure to line up the shoulder seams and pinning those in place, as well as pinning the curves at the bottom in place. And I stitch around the bottom curves of the bodice overlay. Add the bottom sections, starting at that side seam, going around that curve, and I'm putting my needle down and turning my work as I go up that back facing portion. I go around that little guy and I continue around the entire neckline until I get down to that other back facing portion. I'm going to go around that little guy as well. And then finally back down the other curve on that other side until I get to the other side seam. I also sew around the curve on the front of the overlay. I clip all the curves and corners and turn the bodice overlay right sides out and I give everything a really good ironing and you could top stitch all those seams but I didn't do that. Finally, I join the side seams together by separating the lining from the garment fabric. I put them right sides together and I sew along those side seams. So I'm sewing from the lining side up over that seam and then down to the garment side. Going back to that bodice for all options, here's how you sew the bodice neckline. You could apply some lace or piping at the neckline, and if you want to do that, go ahead and do it. I didn't do that for any of my options, but here is some footage from other projects explaining the process. So first, separate the garment bodice from the lining bodice so you are only going to stitch through the garment fabric, leaving the lining out of these stitches. Then you would angle the raw edge off like of your piping or lace, whatever you're using, starting at the one center back crease mark sewing around that neckline and ending at the other center back crease mark, again angling off that raw edge. Then fold the lining to the bodice so that the right sides are together, matching those shoulder seams. Stitch around that neckline from one back all the way around to the other back. And I highly recommend understitching this seam since it gives such a clean result and helps prevent the lining from popping up. So to understitch, move that entire seam to the lining side and I gent gently, so, so gently pull the fabric taut and stitch about a sixteenth of an inch away from the neckline seam. And you won't be able to stitch all the way into the back since the fabric will bunch up too much, but just go as far back as you can. And then clip all those curves and I like to use this little pointer tool to press the corners into a nice neat point. After ironing everything into place, I put the bodice aside again and move on to those sleeves for all the options. So to begin, I join the sleeves together using French seams and then I rip a section of fabric to use for that sleeve placket. And no, there is not a pattern piece for this section of fabric. I really like to just rip a section that is longer than I need so I don't have to think about it. It just makes life easier. You'll have plenty of places to get this little strip from the extra bits of fabric, just trust me, you will have plenty of options. 
and I make it about an inch and a half wide or so and plenty long, say in eight inches. But really these dimensions are very forgiving and fluid and you'll see what I mean as this placket comes together. So I put the placket strip right side together with my sleeve and then stitch to create a placket. You'll have to angle the sleeve off a bit as you approach the bottom of the placket. And then I clip the bottom of the placket to release that tension and I trim up that angled seam. I also trim up that placket strip. See, it is very forgiving and fluid. <laughs> From the seam to the raw edge is about one inch. I fold that placket strip over once and then twice until it's in line with the placket seam. At this point, you could machine stitch the placket down, doing that whole stitch in the ditch number, or you could save that for the hand sewing until later. Regardless, you'll need to put a handful of stitches at the bottom of the placket to give some direction. Just put your sleeve placket right side together and stitch some angled stitches at the bottom of the placket. The exact angle doesn't matter, but having these stitches puts the placket in its place, if you will. The top of the sleeve placket will get folded under so it lays nicely on top of the sleeve's placket. So then you can put two rows of gather stitches, one at the quarter inch mark and another at the five eighths or so ish mark basically on one on either side of where those permanent stitches are going to go then I put the sleeve cuff right side together with the sleeve make sure to leave about quarter of an inch hanging off of the sleeve cuff on both ends of that sleeve cuff also make sure that the top of the sleeve placket is still folded under and then stitch the two together with right sides together you can trim up that seam if you want and then fold the sleeve cuff over. First fold over that long raw edge of the sleeve cuff and then fold over the entire sleeve cuff in half. This is marked on the pattern piece and you'll have that folded edge of the sleeve cuff in line with the seam that we just sewed. Just sewed. Why is that a tongue twister? <laughs> Finally, sew the sleeve cuff together on each end of the sleeve cuff using that quarter inch overhang. So your stitches will be right in line with the placket's finished edge. And you can trim off the corner and then turn the sleeve cuff right sides out, push those corners out, and iron that all into place. Now you could sew that folded edge on the inside of the sleeve down by hand, or you could sew it down by your machine. In all the options, here's how you can attach the sleeves to the bodice. I'm going to show two different ways to attach the sleeves, but with either method, it is a very helpful step to base the bodice overlay to the bodice arms eye. At this point, you have either three or four layers to this arms eye depending on whether your bodice overlay is fully lined or not, so basting all these together is quite helpful. And then you can gather the top of the sleeve by putting two rows of gather stitches. These gather stitches start on one side of that French seam and go until you get to the other side of the French seam. In other words, the entire sleeve is gathered at least that's how i did mine since i want gathers around the entire sleeve but you could concentrate those gathers at the top of the sleeve if you prefer because you know what it's sewing so you do you <laughs> in the first method of attaching the sleeve to the bodice i'm going to show how to do it via a french seam so put the sleeve into the arms eye of the bodice with wrong sides together Match the bottom of the sleeve to the side seam of the bodice and then the top of the sleeve to the shoulder seam of the bodice, adjusting the gathers of the sleeve evenly and then stitch around that arm side. From there, trim up that seam until it's fairly narrow, say an eighth of an inch, and bring that entire sleeve out and then back on itself, flows like around the bodice assembly. And this means now that we have the right side of the sleeve is touching the right side of the bodice assembly, so our right sides are together. And I like to use my fingers to wiggle and adjust that first seam so it's to the side. And then I stitch just on the other side of those raw edges. And that creates a French seam. And even with all these layers, I personally don't think it's too bulky. Actually, I use this method for the corduroy option that has a fully lined bodice overlay. 
and that might walk the line of being too bulky, but I think it was okay. So alternatively, you can sew the seam to the arm side with right sides together, trim up that seam, and zigzag or serge the raw edges to enclose them. And that would be an easier route to take, and it would also reduce the bulk from the fringe seam. Like I say, it's sewing you do you. All right, let's move on to the skirt hemming options, starting with the fabric hem. With the fabric hem, you can use the same fabric as your skirt or introduce a pop of color with a different print. It is a fun little option. So depending on the look that you're going for, you may want to attach this fabric hem to be on the outside of your skirt, like to be seen if it's a pop of color, or on the inside of your skirt as more of a lining technique. If you want it on the outside of your skirt, then pin the right side of the fabric hem to the wrong side of your skirt. Meanwhile, if you want the fabric hem to be on the inside of your skirt, then pin the right side of your fabric hem to the right side of your skirt. Either way, you'll pin the fabric hem to the skirt. I highly recommend pinning since humid air is not going to be your friend here. Yes, the pattern is exact in the computer. These curves will fit together. But between small amounts of air with lining fabric up and cutting it out, you might need to adjust things slightly and pinning allows you to see any adjustments that need to take place. So then sew around the entire bottom circumference of that circle skirt and be careful not to pull on either pieces of the fabric. Just guide them through your machine, but let your machine do the feeding for you. From there, I highly recommend to understitch that seam. If you are putting your fabric hem on the outside of your skirt, then understitch on the skirt side. Alternatively, if you are putting your fabric hem on the inside of your skirt, then understitch on the fabric hem side and then iron that hem to relax everything into place. The top of that fabric hem gets folded under about quarter of an inch, and while this is marked on the pattern piece, I just eyeball the quarter of an inch. I find it easy enough, and I iron that down into place, and I fold the entire fabric hem and pin that into place. So you could hand sew the top edge of this fabric hem into place, or you could top stitch it into place on your sewing machine, and there you go. I simply love this method of finishing a circular skirt's hem. But another hemming option is to use the skirt lining to hem. To do this, you'll place the skirt lining right sides together with the skirt fabric. Again, pinning is a very helpful step here so you can adjust any human error that may be present. And then I stitch around that entire circumference of the circle. And finally, I understitch that hem on the lining side. And there you go. But yet another way to finish the skirt hem is via a rolled hem. To do this on your machine, you'll need a rolled hem foot. And I'm just going to caution you, these little guys have a little bit of a learning curve. But basically, you'll feed your fabric around the rolled area of that foot and then theoretically the foot will do the rest of the work for you. But wait, there's more! <laughs> Yet another way to finish the skirt hem is using a narrow hem. To do this, and this method is quite easy, turn the bottom of the skirt under a tiny bit, say a quarter of an inch, and sew all the way around the skirt. And some people will trim up that raw edge of the fabric up to those stitches, but I don't think it's necessary. You can simply fold that hem up again a very tiny amount, say another you know, quarter inch, and then stitch right on top of those previous stitches for a clean look. And voila, a narrow hem. Now I used a white thread onto this golden corduroy, but you can hardly see it. Remember, this is going to be on a moving child. But yes, if you are a better person than I am, you could absolutely match your thread to your fabric. With all the options, stay stitching around the top of your skirt is a highly recommended step to take to prevent the circle from getting pulled out of shape. Remember, we've put a circle into a continuous piece of fabric here. So some parts of that circle fall on the bias, of the fabric while other parts fall on the straight or cross grain of the fabric and all these pieces of fabric behave differently so simply putting some small stitches around that circle helps everyone behave i like to stitch just inside of the seam allowance for that waist seam 
Skirt placket options for a lined skirt. In the same manner that we attach the sleeve placket, we're going to attach a placket to the back of the skirt. Once again, there is no pattern piece for this since I think it's so much easier just getting a strip that is oversized, say 2 inches wide by 12 inches long, and trimming it down after it's sewn. For a line skirt, I base the two layers of the skirt together around that placket area, and then I clip the bottom of that basting so I can open it up that section and sew it to the placket strip with right sides together. Once again, trim as needed so the placket strip is about one inch wide, and then I fold that placket strip over about half an inch, iron that in place, and then over again so the placket is a half an inch wide. And once again, you can sew this in place via your sewing machine or by hand. Either way, make sure to put those handful of angled stitches at the bottom of the placket. And then the right side of the placket will be folded under so it lays nicely on top of the left side. Pinning this in place may be helpful here so you don't forget or does it, so it doesn't come unfolded on you. Let's finish up this dress by joining the bodice to the skirt. Once again, make sure the right side of your skirt's placket is folded under and then pin the right side of the bodice to the right side of the skirt. You'll start with lining up that crease to the folded side of the placket and pinning your way around, making sure to leave the lining of the bodice out of this step. And you'll sew from one center back all the way around the skirt to the other center back. For all options, here are some hand finishings. If you opted for finishing things by hand, here is how I do that. In places like the sleeve cuff, the plackets, the bodice lining, when I finish these by hand, I like to use some DMC 50 weight thread and come up a little ways a bit from where I want to start my stitches. This allows me to hide the tail of the thread, which may seem like a small detail, but oh boy, it makes your work look so much neater. So then I secure my thread on by creating a loop and then going through that loop twice and pulling tight. Then I sew using those machine stitches. So I'll go through one machine stitch and grab that folded fabric and then through another machine stitch, grab more of that folded fabric, you get the drift. On the back facing area, I stitch this down by hand by doing a very small running stitch and I think it looks so sweet and very vintage-ish, right? Vintage-ish? <laughs> Last but certainly not least, your closure options. You could do buttons snaps are a combination of the two. Now I only do hand sewn buttonholes and I don't mean to sound snobby when I say that, but if you decide to do machine buttonholes and you get into a fight with your machine, I cannot provide the necessary counseling. Okay, so please do not email me. I do have an entire series that dives into hand sewn buttonholes though, and I hope that that series is helpful. Alternatively, you could use snaps instead. I like to sew a snap on by double threading my needle and then using that loop to secure on my thread. So I'll go through my fabric and then I will catch that loop. Isn't that clever? From there I go through each hole of the snap, wrapping my thread twice to provide some additional strength. So basically I'm putting a knot into each hole of that snap. And when I move from one hole to the next, I slide my needle in between the lining and garment fabrics to hide my thread. There are so many different embellishment options for this dress and I appreciate everyone's support. If you need any help with this pattern, I am here for you. So please put those questions down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.